uh, some of you have already heard from this morning with the healing mantras is Rupo Gyal Dakini. She was born in the northeastern part of Tibet into a Tibetan yogi family where mantras and meditation were introduced to, at a young age. With the support from the local Tibetan yoga community and family, she practiced mantras with traditional old melodies and then first sang publicly in 2008. She moved to Europe six years later in order to work with the Sori Khan International uh, organization, which is one of the biggest organizations, Academy of Traditional Tibetan Medicine in the West. And she has now produced five albums of Tibetan healing mantras and chants. We heard some of them this morning with musicians from all over the world. She's traveled to more than 20 countries to share concerts, public talks, workshops, and courses on healing mantras, yoga, meditation, as well as external therapies according to traditional Tibetan medicine. So one of the focuses of all her activities is helping women find equality, helping mothers and children to view each other with divinity and compassion through Tibetan spiritual healing and Buddhist practices. So let's welcome Kutmo Gyal Dakin. That's the greeting that we would usually say in Tibet. Um, I feel very pressured after hearing all the talks and then I am I'm the youngest in flesh and I'm incarnated much later. <laughs> so um, I um, I think what I'm gonna share is more of uh, representing the younger generations and uh, what um, Fashu is talking about is a brand system, system and uh, sustainability of how Buddhism can grow in the West. Because um, I grew up in a Buddhist family and that wasn't uh, my choice. <laughs> and uh, Buddhism has um, developed itself in Tibet since 8th century, um, pretty strong. So I can I get to see and uh, witness experience Buddhist practices since um, I was four five years old. Then um, when I did see the difference um, is that when I went to because I grew up in Tibetan region and it's inside China and uh, I went to communal schools. Then I had to go through all kinds of. Uh, uh, modern education, the education of uh, uh, <coughs> criticism, yeah? uh, and um, the education of doubt, so that you have to question everything, uh, which is very good, and I, I enjoyed it. But then that also led me, as a teen, questioning my parents' faith. I mean, I didn't have the, um, I, didn't, I didn't get enough um, reasons, because I'm trained to get reasons to, to believe in something, and then I didn't get enough reasons to believe in the belief that my parents were parents have. But then um, I came across uh, Tibetan medicine, uh, which was a very down-to-earth system, it talks about how to heal the body. And then healing the body, it involves the uh, mind, it involves the energy. So, um, talking about Tibetan Buddhism, I cannot, I cannot represent uh, Tibetan Buddhism. Um, I'm too tiny for that. But, <laughs> um, but we call Tibetan Buddhism Vajrayana, so Vajrayana can be understood as a tradition um, that builds harmony in between lay practitioners and the monastics. So that's where I found my place because I wasn't uh, living my life as a total lay that I did not have any spirituality. But then I'm not a monastic. I'm not a nun. Then it was a kind of an awkward place and I didn't know which box I belonged to. But then when it when it when when the tradition of Yogis and yoginis in Tibet, we also call them Ngakpa and Ngamma. 
Anga means mantra, so Anga Ba and Anga Ma are, uh, can be translated as um, mantra reciters. So they actually work um, through their energy, and energy here I refer to breathing techniques and mantras, speech practices. And all they work through the speech to balance uh, body and mind. You know that 60% of the diseases nowadays are psychosomatic. So, you know, if, if the energy is imbalanced, then the energy is going to attack the mind, and the mind uh, is going to attack our body, so we're sick and unhappy. So, um, uh, coming back to that, um, it's um, the, the key point of Vajrayana is um, transformation. So, I really enjoyed um, uh, the earlier talk. Um, saying that the traditions, the sects, should actually um, communicate more. And the communication, the e efficient communication, is through uh, a well-trained, uh, uh, skill of transformation, so that we are able to transform our inner poisons into wisdom, or we're able to transform um, our discursive thoughts uh, through uh, seeing its nature. So that we do not stick or stuck uh, with any of the appearance appearances or like uh, oh, come on, it's, it's, I'm getting there. <laughs> and uh, then yeah, so the key point is transformation, but of course the foundation of for Hinayana, Mahayana, Vajrayana are all the four measurables. That's why uh, Alan this morning accompanied me to share this um, four measurable quality and the uh, mantra. And the other one that I would like to say is Vajrayana is also um, uh, a medical, um, has its medical aspect. And uh, it, it actually uh, blend in to Tibetan medicine, uh, the Vajrayana, uh, so that actually you do not only, only study the physical anatomy, you also have a Vajra anatomy which talks about the channels, chakras, how they relate to each other, and how do we work through, um, we call long in Tibetan, uh, in the Sanskrit prana, and then in uh, Chinese qi. So through working th through qi, prana, long, we're able to achieve that balance, or um, to bring that mental peace, so that our mind doesn't attack our body. And um, because of that medical aspect, I think my logistic hunger was kind of um, satisfied and I was able to find a physical reason like more more gross level of the reasons and then I can relate that to the spiritual level or the energetic level um, so it made pretty much sense so that's why I decided to spend more and more time in introducing to the public about the healing mantras, uh, the mantras of uh, healing system, uh, Tibetan healing system. And uh, the other one is, uh, quickly, the innovative approach. So um, I believe that because the younger generations are so much into science and uh, computer, computer science, so we should really get, we should really somehow blend the uh, Buddhist practices such as Bardo practices, if you have heard, and dream yoga, Bardo yoga, and uh, Julu, the illusory body yoga. The, the content of these yogas are massive and they can be really just presented through VR uh, and uh, through, uh, through, through modern techniques and approach to younger generations. So I think that's very, very important approach very innovative and important approach. Thank you.